Last week, I got a question on Discord. How can I make an enemy instantiate or throw an object at 50th second of the 100 second animation time? And although I answered it on Discord, I decided to make a video about it as well because it can be very useful. So the problem that I'm going to be solving is a little bit different than what I got for the request. So let me first show you what I have for it right now. Okay, I got a character right here. And once I get close to some resource, I can press E and the character starts mining. But you can see that I get the resource right at the beginning of the mining. And I would want the resource to be actually harvested only once that pickaxe actually hits that rock. Several ways you can approach this problem. Actually, you can create a collision and work with triggers and see when the pickaxe actually hits the resource and give the resources like that. Or you can time the animation and make a timer to wait before you give the resources for a certain time. But the approach that I'm going to be showing in this video is how to actually create an event on the animation itself. Let me open the window with the animations. And currently I have idle, jump, run, and mining animation. So the one that I'm interested in is mining. Click that. And if we click play, you can see the animation play. So if I want to trigger something right at this point, so you can see that that's where the pickaxe is on its lowest point, then you would want to add an event. And their option for adding event is right here, but currently it's actually grayed out because the animation is read only. The reason why it's read only is because it's part of this import. You can actually add the event in the import as well. If you select the import and under animation settings, we can go and there is an event option. You can click add event and then move it to where you want that event to be at. So there is an option to add the event on the import. But the other way of doing it is actually getting this animation out of this import. And the way you can do it is select it, control D to duplicate it. And that creates a copy of that animation outside of the import. Now, be sure to go to your animator and switch to use this mining instead. Otherwise, any changes that you make here are not going to be actually doing anything. Let's go back to my character, open the animation window again. There's a shortcut control six to open that. And now if I select the mining animation, the events actually are no longer grayed out. So I can go back to the point where I want that event to be added. So let's edit right here. You can switch to frames if you want instead of seconds. So it's 26th frame right here. Click add event. And now since I do have the character selected and if I select the event, it gives me the option of selecting the function. In this drop down, you'll see a lot of options. And if you're trying to trigger it with your C sharp script, you can find the public function that you have on this character to trigger that script. But I'll be showing how you can do it with visual scripting. So for visual scripting, there is this trigger animation event option. So that is added if you have a script machine added to the character. I do have two script machines on my character, so I have that option. And once you select that function, you get options for sending data. You can send float, int, string, or object. What I'm going to do is actually set the string option here, and I'll just say hit. And that's going to help us out to find that animation event in our script. So let's go to our script. Here I have a movement script and here is the interaction script. So let's add a graph. And in here I currently have the on keyboard input E event. I trigger the animation and then if it's up, I disable that animation. Now this part right here is what actually tries to get that resource. And currently I'm just listening for the E down event as well. Like I said, one of the options you can create a delay and trigger that after delay. But what we're looking at right now is using the animation events. So let's look for a node animation. 
And here we have two options. So we have animation event and named animation event. I'm going to add both of those in so we can see them side by side. So the animation event has all of the values here, string, float, integer, and object. So if you trigger animation event on this character, this will be triggered all the time. Now the named animation event has an input field string for us. So the string is not actually one of the data outputs, but it's actually on the input side. And this allows us to use the string that we have set for the animation event. So if I pull up that event again, so the string we have set it to hit, we can use that string to filter out what event we want this to trigger. So if you have multiple animation events in your script, you can use this approach to filter out that specific event. So that's what I'm going to be using. I'm going to remove the keyboard input event now. And now whenever we get hit, I'm not passing any other values, the floats, integers, or objects. If you need those, you can do that. But for me, I just want to get that event and trigger the resource pickup. With that, I think we're done. Let's test it out and see if that is working. So let's go to one of those rocks. And now if we press E, we get the resources right when we can see that it's actually being hit. So let me know what you think about this approach. If you have any suggestions, just let me know in the comments and maybe there is a better way of doing that. But I hope you found this useful. If you want to support this channel, there is a link in description for that. And I'll see you in the next one.